Welcome back to Modern Art Blitz. My name is Matt Gleason. I'm your host. This is my co-host, Lisa Derrick. And in the sketcher seat, intern Aliza. Our guest, Ray Beldner, a legend in the Bay Area. A legend among artists in the Bay Area? In my own mind. In the art world? <laughs> Where does your legend start and stop? It probably starts and stops in the Bay Area. In the Bay Area? Speaking of starting, though. <laughs> wow, that's a nice transition. I like that. <laughs> Good one, about, Lisa. <laughs> tell us about beyond your art, and I do want to talk about your art a little bit, but let's okay. really talk about the thing yeah. that you are really doing now, yeah. which is a, kind of a change for you, transformation, but you've started the Startup Art Fair. Startup Art Fair. Tell me, now, okay. I own a gallery. What's the difference between an art fair that I do, where I take a bunch of my artists, yeah. and the Startup Art Fair? So Startup Art Fair is an art fair for independent artists. And um, instead of uh, inviting galleries to have a booth and put up works of artists, we're inviting individual artists to take a booth and put up a solo show of their work. In our case, it's a hotel fair, so we don't have booths. It's not a white booth thing where you walk by the thing. It's a hotel we take over. And in LA, we take over the Highland Gardens Hotel in Hollywood. Um, which is... Isn't that where Janis Joplin had her last yes. meal? Yes, yes <laughs> that is. And famously it's, known for where Janis Joplin OD'd. Yes. yes, and it's conveniently located by the Hollywood and Highland uh, metro station, so people can just metro over there. Exactly, and there's the eight parking the garages within a three-block walking area. Gotta it's also near it. the Hollywood Bowl, it's near the Dolby Theater, it's near Grauman's Chinese, if you really want to go down there. Yomashiro. It's right down the hill from Yamashiro. Which is great because they've yeah. reopened. They have the beautiful patio area now. It's delicious. Yeah, I love it. It's beautiful, actually. Tell me, when I hear, when people hear, I'm already kind of sold on your startup art fair, but let's just, for the sake of argument, yeah. when one hears of an artist-involved fair, the artist is coming, isn't that a little uh, schlocky? Like, oh, you know, the artist's going to be there with, like, T-shirts and mugs and, like, jaclays. Yeah. I mean, help yeah. me out here, Ray. It's nothing like that. In nothing. Fact, so I co-founded it with a former art dealer, Steve Zavatero, who ran a gallery in San Francisco with his wife, um, Heather Marks, Marks and Zavatero. So he's been in the art world a long time. I've been in the art world a long time. The last thing we wanted to do was create an art fair that looked like that. We wanted to have an art fair that was vetted, so we typically have six art professionals, two well-respected artists, two well-respected dealers, and generally two curators as well. Um, we've had people like Dan Cameron, Kim Abelese was on our um, selection committee. Okay, we, this, is, this is pretty refined. It's yeah. good people, and uh, the idea is that it's a not a pay-to-play type of art fair. Once you get in, uh, if you get in uh, and make it through the jury, Yes, you obviously have to pay uh, fees for the, for the room. Um, like any business person, like though. Like any business, yes. I know a lot of artists have, uh, are rightfully suspicious of anything that is called an art fair because what has passed for art fairs for artists have really been nothing more than cattle calls of schlocky art, as you describe. These are solo exhibitions in a lovely hotel where the artist takes control of their exhibition and sales of their work. They keep 100% of their sales of their work um, and all the contacts that they make. And the point of the fair, besides selling work, is really to make connections to the larger art world. The larger art world, are, is Ray Beldner, is the larger art world showing up to start up art fair? How are you promoting this? So we work with a PR team that's based out of San Francisco and uh, we do go after the exact same people from the art fair that the bigger art fairs go after, right? We're looking for dealers, art consultants, collectors, art critics, um, art lovers of all kinds. We really want to bring in the literally the larger art world into these uh, rooms, something that an artist can't do on their own. You know, yes, you might pay somewhere between $2,500 and $5,000 to participate in this fair, the question is, could you pay that, could you spend that on your own and bring in these hundreds and thousands of people from the art world over a course of time on your own? You know, I'm, I'm curious, do you, do you like 
call each one of them on the phone? Text? Do you text we like museum curators? Hey, call dude. People. No, we literally do. We not only do the typical things of press releases and emails and social media posting, but my partner and I get on the phone and literally call dealers and art consultants and collectors. If whatever it takes to get them there. I mean, that's half the battle. First, it's getting good artists to apply and to be accepted. And then the next thing is bringing in all these other art world players that will enable these artists to um, have a successful exhibition. And how much is it for the general public or anyone who wants to go? And do you have like a VIP reception the night before the grand opening? Yeah. And just sort of like if as, a, as a, an art fan, if I wanted to attend, how much would it be for the weekend? If I wanted yeah. to do the, that whole thing, so it's typical of of most art fairs, you know, right? To have like a you know three four day event. We we open on a Friday, so mm -hmm. it's Friday, January twenty seventh, twenty seventeen. We go Saturday and we go Sunday, and the hours are you know roughly noon to seven on Sunday, noon to nine I think on Saturday, noon to ten on Friday. Friday we open uh, and we have a and at, in the well, evening from 7 to 10 p.m. we have a what we call our it's not a gala it doesn't cost any extra but it's our opening night reception it's only uh, I think I can't remember what our ticket prices are, were last year but this year they're going to be somewhere between ten and twenty dollars depending on if you're a student or senior or wow that's kind of super affordable it's well, just like it, it, noon it's to roughly 10. the same as other art fairs noon to ten noon to 10 p.m. That's a long shift in that booth, man. It's a long time. That's a long time. Yeah. And it's not, you know, it, as I say to artists who are thinking about applying, it's not for the faint of heart. It's not for every artist. You have to stand up and talk about your work for somewhere between seven and 10 hours um, each day um, over the course of a weekend. In a, in it a way, takes a lot out of you. In a way, it could be, you could be, I mean, that's a great way to sharpen up, so to yeah. speak, with your, you know, sharpen up your art speak, you know? Yeah. Like, what's your pitch? Yeah, and, be, and to get comfortable with people who want to buy your art. Because there are artists who are just sort of like, mm. right. and I've noticed... Do that again, could you? Mm. <laughs> can, we get, can we get a close-up on Lisa? Can we get a close-up on Lisa? <clears throat> and, but I've noticed... I agree, there are artists like that. And there's some artists who resent buyers who have... They resent money. And therefore, they're going to resent their buyers because their buyers have money and can afford it. Yeah. When you have a when you hate the rich, who are you going to? Who's going to be buying your four thousand dollar piece of art if you hate the rich yeah. and you sit there and you like resent somebody who walks in? Rich people don't buy four thousand dollar artworks. You got to put a few more <laughs> zeros 000. on no, that. No, but you know, I mean, I meant for yeah. like the guest room, ah. <laughs> for the guest bath, for the guest bathroom, for the toilet. <laughs> well, it's not for everybody. I mean, certainly there are artists that um, have the ability to walk up to people, look them in the eye, and shake their hands and introduce themselves. Then there's other artists that um, have a really difficult time uh, talking about their work in public. They probably wouldn't do a fair like this. However, if there are artists out there that want to do our fair but don't feel comfortable with the public. There's many ways of getting around that. You could bring a friend. You could, you know, you could uh, work in shifts with them so you're not you there can, with the whole... You can a always, bikini model. You can always hire a salesperson. There's salespeople out there on Craigslist, right? Yeah, except for one of the things that we say about our fair, the, the, the thing that we tout about startup is that it's an opportunity to meet the artist. So we really require that the artists are in the room most of the time. But you don't have to be there alone, and you can have someone there championing you, even a team. Last year, we had a wonderful artist from the Bay Area who came in. She had an entire team of people that worked with her the whole time. We had Donnie Silver Simons, who's from LA. She had a team of people coming in, and they were helping her with performance and with some live things that were going on in her room. So you don't have to do it on your own. You don't have to be the solo entrepreneur 100% of the time. So. so so, what about artists who don't really have, um, how do I say this, the funds? Like this could be somebody's entire budget, like yeah. they, they're, you know, they're, they're thinking of promoting their career. I mean, I respect $5,000 investment. It, are they gonna get their money back or, or are there ways that this sort of investment pays off? Well, you have to, if you go do an art fair thinking that you're going to get your money back, you're, you will 
likely be disappointed. You have to think of it as a long-term marketing investment. Mm -hmm. Yes, many people go and they do very well and they make some or all of their money back immediately, but as we say in the art fair business, I guess, it's a slow burn and so there's lots of other opportunities that happen, you know, weeks, days, weeks, months afterwards. So you're working to get people there who are not necessarily instant buyers, they may be curators. Right. And then a curator could actually be the person who like gives them a show, discovers That's them at right. Startup Art Fair, gives them a show, and then, um, you know, yeah. who knows what could, happens from that show later on. Exactly. Right? I mean, we've had many examples where artists will um, meet up with curators or art consultants, get connected to a gallery, have a show in a gallery, sell out their gallery show. So it's really about, it should be looked at as an opportunity to make connections, really. And um, it is an investment, and it is a hefty investment for many artists, and I totally understand that. But there are ways to make it work. You could do a Kickstarter for the money. You can share the room with one or two other artists and defray the costs. Um, you can have a studio sale before you do the fair. Um, and Lots of creative ways in which to raise the money in order to get into okay, the Okay, but in, adi in addition to the money, the, the basically you're, you're showing how many artists are going to be in the fair? Well, somewhere around 35 to 45. Okay, so you've got 35 well. to 45 artists who are really announcing that they're serious enough about their career to make this investment. Yeah. And, and in a way, it's kind of like the price of admission. Your job as the fair is it not to find the collectors, the curators, the yeah. critics, and to introduce them to this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Basically, you've curated a show in vetting the show. Yeah. Now, but you ha you aren't doing it personally. The vetting, no, and that and we've made it our goal in doing the fair to keep ourselves out of the actual selection. We didn't want to seem like we were selecting artists for personal reasons, like we'll take this artist even though they're not that great because we need the money. We empower our jury to uh, select the artist. We do not get involved with it. And we give them really one criteria. Is this artist ready to have a solo exhibition at an art fair? That's, that's all they're judging them on. Ray, Ray um, what, if, what if the jurors disagree? Like, do the jurors do they, did Kim Abelese, like put on boxing gloves? <laughs> do a round with Dan Cameron? Huh? They, well, through the wonders of technology, everybody juries in the comfort of their own home online, and they uh, rate them. And then we take the collective ratings, and we see you know, what the average of each artist is. They have to reach a certain level to be um, accepted into the fair. And what is the deadline to submit for the jury? That's a really good question. <laughs> so for LA, our deadline is um, November 10th at midnight. November Ooh, 10th. Ooh, that's Today right is around. What? We're filming the show November what? What is the day? 6th. November 6th. Four, four days. days. Oh, you got four days, man. The yeah. deadline What's the pressure website? Even... What's the website? www.startupartfair.com. Click on the LA site. We have three sites because we have three fairs in San Francisco, LA, and Chicago. Wow. The fee to apply is $25, pretty standard for applying for oh, that's, stuff. No, that's, that's actually cheap. I, I applied, yeah. uh, my gallery, we've applied to Art Basel. We made the waiting list a couple times. <laughs> um, that's as much as I can brag, but um, it was 450 bucks. Yeah. But it is Art Basel, yeah. you know, 25 bucks. Uh, you're, you're, you're way, uh, there's, there's some cheesy fares out there that are charging 150, 200. So, yeah. so this is a very fair, and I, it's and fair. I have to, I want to vouch for, uh, the startup art fair because, um, uh, I've known Ray a long time. He's, he's a stand, stand up dude. Steve Zavatero, and for a Giants fan, he's okay, you know. <laughs> no, but you yeah. had an amazing exhibition last year in LA. It yeah. was, um, I'm trying, I'm, was it Kim Mayoki? Kathy Aoki? Kathy Aoki. Kathy Aoki. Right. So, so I want to vouch, like, yeah. people, people out there, it's a new concept, an artist run fair, but I want to vouch for the fact that this is a, a pretty class organization, and they really are transparent with how they're operating, and the goal is really to have the best possible exhibition. The goal isn't like, let's find a way to make a bunch of money. The goal here is to actually accelerate everybody's career in the art world, yours notwithstanding. Well, I mean, the rising tide lifts all boats. Lifts all boats. And, and the way that it works in the art world, as it works in many worlds, is we have to help each other. And this is my little contribution to the art world. It's not a panacea for every artist, but for people that can and are willing to do it, it can be a very helpful 
uh, tool for furthering their career. And, and you're, you're not to going to be showing your art at the fair, are you? Oh my God. Well, the ironic thing is, is I started this fair because I was my <laughs> own best customer. I was an artist who had, sh had galleries in LA and San Francisco and New York. And one by one, I lost them for various reasons. They went out of business, they retired, we parted ways. So I was looking for a way to get my work in front of the art fair crowd. And if you're an artist without gallery representation, there's no way you could be in an art fair. So I thought, well, I'm going to make an art fair for independent artists. But, awesome. but I can't, the ironic thing about it is I can't participate in my own fair. Grand to be. <laughs> now, now, real quick, because I'm, I'm a fan of your, you and your art. I mean, you, you, you. Know, you, you've got a, a really great exhibition track record. You're, you're, in a, you're, you're in a couple of museum collections, right? I have done 15 solo shows, and I've been in more than 100 group exhibitions, and I'm in the collection of the Smithsonian Portrait Gallery, the SF... Uh, sorry, not SF MoMA, the San Francisco Fine Arts Museum, San Jose Museum. I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm a legit artist, I and, guess. And, and, okay, real quick, you live in San Francisco, right? I do. You live in the city limits of San Francisco. I do. Are you, are you, how long have you lived in the Bay Area? My entire life. I'm born and raised in San 25 Francisco. 25 years then, right? Uh, roughly, a little more than that. <laughs> so so, so <laughs> let, let, let me ask you, because, you know, what's up with the, what's the, with the San Francisco scene? Is it a decent scene? Well, it's evolving, it's getting better, and there's a couple of things that have happened to make it better. And one is Max Fischko started the um, SF Art Market, which is a very good gallery fair that, that happens at the same time as ours that we do in San Francisco. Um, the SF MoMA was rebuilt or built and then rebuilt five years Ooh, later. Man. And it is one of the biggest, per square foot, one of the biggest modern art museums in the country now with one of the best collections of modern art in the country. It's pretty sickening how, yeah. how amazing it is. The de Young was rebuilt and it's absolutely gorgeous in the Golden Gate Park. Um, and the gallery scene used to be very centrally located in downtown San Francisco near Union Square. And little by little, it is kind of decentralized to Potrero Hill, to Dog Patch, to South of Market, and some galleries still staying downtown. It's a little bit like LA in that sense. It's kind of become decentralized, but it's actually become richer. And I actually think that uh, the art scene is better than I've seen it in a long time. So, so uh, do you think that the San Francisco art scene is healthy? I, I do think it's healthy. I, I, I think. I think galleries are struggling all over the country because art fairs, if you can't afford to be a, do an art fair if you're a gallery, that's tough. Um, and also rents are rising all over the place and galleries are going out. Everywhere. Of, yeah, and galleries who get kicked out, especially in San Francisco, a lot of galleries have gotten kicked out for tech companies who've um, paid more for the rent and they've had a hard time finding places to relocate to. But given that, I feel like they're... Oh, I is as many or more buyers than there have been in a long time. The oh internet has, while it's driven galleries out of business to some degree, it has democratized art buying what for do you, everyone. What do you think of like Saatchi online type stuff? Yeah, well, I, back in the original dot com, I worked for a company called Next Monet where we were trying to sell original work online. And I think we were probably, you know, 10 years ahead of our time. Uh -huh. But now there are a lot of entities, U Gallery, Saatchi, um, there's a million of them, I can't even name them all, that are selling artwork online to varying degrees. They're like art fairs. Some of them are good, some of them are not so good. Wow, um, wow, wow. But what's nice about the internet anyway is that it's provided artists more opportunities to get exposure for their work. Suppose I come up to San Francisco, and I do on occasion. Um, let's how say... how come you don't call me? How many, <laughs> how many, how many days do I need to see all the good galleries, the SF MoMA, you know, let's, let's say that I'm going to do the SF MoMA in one yeah. day. How many days does it take to do all the galleries? Could I do them all in a day? I think you need a couple of days. A couple of days? Because of how spread out they are. Okay. Um, one thing that happened that's been a really good sign of the art market in San Francisco is that uh, there's a, a, a couple of collectors, uh, Andy and Deborah Rappaport, who started this thing called Minnesota Street Projects. And they took a warehouse in Dogpatch that was in a really shitty neighborhood, fixed it all up, and they've created um, gallery spaces that are below market. And so a lot of galleries that were formerly floundering and ready to go out of business found a home in a place that they could afford. And so that alone, that building alone, is a place you could spend the entire day. Wow. So it's, it's kind of replaced 49 Geary then. Like, yeah, that, that 49 was, Geary is dying and is almost dead, and now it's Minnesota Street San Project. San Francisco, I used to go to, I just go, I would go to SF MoMA, 
49 Geary, and then I, could go, then I could go to a baseball game or, right. or a nice restaurant and get the hell out of town. Ray Beldner, it has been a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Good luck with Startup Art Fair. I highly recommend it for artists. Uh, if, you're, if you're budgeting, promoting your career, I think it's probably one of the best investments you could make. Um, let's see the sketch of Ray Beldner from Inter oh, wow. Aliza look a little in bit, the sketches. You look a little see, sad. You look a little <laughs> sad. Wistful, mournful, this, pensive. Make this man happy and sign up for the Startup Art Fair. <laughs> All right. On behalf of Inter Aliza, my lovely, lovely co host, Lisa Derrick. My erudite. Eri and, er yes. ew, okay. Geez. And, and, and. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> You're so interesting. Such an interesting monster. My name is Matt Gleason, and I've been your host for Modern Art Blitz. This was our 43rd episode. Catch us on Dronebox Live at Dronebox.com live at five every Sunday afternoon. Fuck the NFL. <laughs>